Pack your bags at your leisure, fans. This week, we're off on some awesome adventures. Chad and I hit the road as we try to dig up some fun in one of Utah's abandoned mining towns. Then, where would you take your family to find a canyoneering adventure fit for all ages and experience levels? We found a perfect spot in central Utah that will have you packing your helmets, your ropes, and your camera. Finally, Reese takes us to a European country that has managed to maintain a rich culture despite its turbulent history. It's all flying your way now. At your leisure is next. So what's that line from the Blues Brothers, Ria? Uh, <laughs> half a tank of gas. 160 miles to yeah. Chicago, it's dark, we're wearing sunglasses. That's right, and we're on a mission from God. Because <laughs> we're yeah. in the San Rafael Swell. Yeah, welcome to At Your Leisure, I'm Chad Booth. I'm Maria Rossi Booth, and these are our great friends, our Jeep and friends today. We got Marlon and Julia Sharp, we got Al Crapo, and we've got wonderful Larry Ellerson from Utah County here. And we are so blessed to have this gorgeous day with our wonderful friends today. I think they're actually all from Utah County, but I'm not. I'm oh, are you all from Utah County? Talk yeah, yeah, yeah. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, good this, for is Utah a, County. this is a historical <laughs> ride today. The Copper Globe Mine has a lot of history, and there are a lot of artifacts up there. And so that's our goal today is to check out that history and share it with you. However, on the way there, there's yet another historical story and an interesting tale about the road itself. And Professor Marlin, our, our official historian, has the details. What, what's up with this road? Well, it was, uh, it was originally created for the Copper Globe Mine, and it was built by hand, pretty much, uh, you know, pick and shovel, and, uh, and it was a pretty rough road as it went along. Um, what happened is a, a certain group came along and said, well, this is a wilderness area. You can't have a road there. And so they uh, wanted to close it, and so then there'd be no way to get to that historic mine. And uh, so the county came out and says, oh, no, we don't. We want, to, we want to keep this road. And so they came through and they bulldozed it, made it nice and smooth, and claimed the road. And uh, well, pretty soon everything passes by and, and uh, the road the secure. Road, yeah, the road is, uh, is there. And then it starts falling apart again and becomes a four wheel walk drive road and everybody likes that yeah <laughs> but at least it's a road now and it's designated exactly but we got to air down though when you go on this road well that's and, and we're yeah. going to find it yeah so what's the trail like out here what are we going to see in the next uh six seven miles on the way up to the mine you're going to see uh just amazing beautiful country and uh the the rocks are, are kind of a yellow sandstone material and it's it's a sandy type road, a little bit of rock as we as we travel along, and uh, I think that uh, it's just it's just beautiful. It's just wonderful. And is this is this road accessible year round? You can get in. Anytime. Yes, yeah. In fact, there are a lot of people come here even in January, and uh, sometimes there's a little bit of snow, but it's a great. Uh, it's a great road. It's about 7,000 feet, but... Uh, you know, it's okay because you're in your Jeeps and it's nice and toasty and well, you just hit the trail. We are going to take off right now from here. We're going to make our way to Copper Globe. That's where we will check in with you again. Right now, though, it's time for us to take off and head to our Where To Adventure. So today we're uh, taking a trip to the Goblin's Lair in the Chamber of the Basilisks, uh, located in uh, Goblin Valley State Park. It's a two mile long canyoneering tour. Uh, involves a whole lot of fun hiking and scrambling and stemming and rappelling down into an incredible 90-foot chamber that's a free rappel, which means as you go down, your feet are just dangling in the air, and it's a, it's a really beautiful, uh, almost gothic-like cathedral that we'll be rappelling into today. I like to achieve three things on our adventures. Uh, number one is to have a really great adventure and a lot of fun. Two is to see some really spectacular and unique scenery, which you definitely do today. Uh, and three is to be safe. I've spent a lot of time kind of just exploring canyons in Arizona and um, going through some flat canyons and doing stuff in Zion, but being able to be out in a canyon and actually do some real canyoneering with rappelling is the kind of adventure that we are really excited about. Uh, with the kids, it's super important to me to uh, you know, raise strong girls and doing these kinds of activities gives them 
you know, a really good sense of self-confidence um, and really pushes them to do things that uh, they may normally not do. But, you know, once they cross that threshold, they learn, yeah, I can totally do this. And that just kind of builds and builds and builds and has sort of over the years of what uh, my wife, Chris, and I uh, do with them. And once we get into the can canyon, um, we uh, change from hiking to scrambling, which means we have to start using our arms and our hands to climb up and around and over obstacles uh, as we work our way down the canyon. This has been great. It's a great terrain. A little bit of scrambling is good for you. I think it's really fun for the kids to feel like things are, there's a little element of adventure to it. Um, and so far it's been really fun and we are really excited to get on the road. And it's great with two girls especially. I think, you know, their dads is climbing, canyoneering, doing stuff his whole life. So it's really important that we could do this all together and share some of it with our kids and have some of these experiences. So once we get to the Goblin's Lair Rappel, uh, we set up a uh, really bomber anchor, you know, with some webbing and some rope. Uh, safety is paramount uh, on our trips. We like to build a redundant anchor system and kind of go through the steps of rappelling with each of the guests to help them feel more comfortable uh, as we set up the rappel rope and then get the, each of us uh, attached to the rope to begin the rappel down into the goblin's lair. I'm not your average 10 year old for your information. <laughs> Watch that. Woo! 90 footer, that's sweet. Well, this was my first time rappelling. Um, I was a little scared at first, but it was really fun. Once I like actually got down and was just like going down, it was really beautiful and it was a really amazing experience. We're definitely gonna um, rappel again. It was super fun and we had a blast, so. We've taken out guests um, from 8 to 80 years old here at Goblin Valley State Park and everything in between. And everybody at the end of the day really has a fun adventure. It's just getting over that first step. And then once they're over that first step, uh, it's really a fun ride down to the bottom of the Goblin's Lair. Whether you're on the track, at the dunes, or in the mountains, Paris RV and Stryker are number one. Chill out in the 2019 Stryker 2313, 35995 or 320 a month, zero down. Or kick it in the 2019 Stryker 2912, 39995 or 355 a month, zero down. Or the 2019 Stryker 2816, 49995 or 440 a month, zero down. It's time to get your toy hauler at Paris RV. Kawasaki Mule side-by-sides are some of the toughest machines around. Work hard or play hard. With the new Mule Pro MX, you don't have to choose. It's about having the right machine to fit the way you live. And it's about strength. The all-new Mule Pro MX. The strongest, because I said so. This week's What's New segment is brought to you by Tunex of South Jordan and West Valley. More than just tune-ups, we're off-road. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Yardley with Eagles Landing and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we are going to be doing braised short ribs. The fun thing about this recipe, it's quick and easy to put together, throw it in the oven, you can go out for a hike, you can go out for an ATV ride. You can even go play a round of golf. When you get home, you've got a nice dinner ready and waiting. All right, the first step, 
We take three tablespoons of olive oil, or I actually like to use avocado oil just for the little extra health factor. Put it in the bottom of your pan on medium high heat because you really want to get a good sear on all of these braised short ribs. And then one at a time, lay each of the braised short ribs down. I start with the meat side first. You want to make sure that that gets the best heat out of the pan. You want to sear them on all sides. Flip them over. Cook on the other side there. Now at this point in time, you want to turn your oven on to preheat to 325 degrees so that by the time this initial braising process is over, we can throw them in the oven and hit the trail. So once they are completely seared on all sides, remove them from the pot, set them aside, and then we move on to our vegetables. Start with our onions, celery, and carrots. Go ahead and drop them in the pan, stir them around a little bit. And then you want to cook these down for approximately five minutes. Give them a chance to get a little tender. Now next, what you want to do, you want to add your spices. Two teaspoons rosemary, two teaspoons garlic powder, two teaspoons onion powder, and two teaspoons thyme with two bay leaves. So I guess it's all about the twos today. All right, now after about two minutes of the spices coming alive in your pot, put in a one six ounce can of tomato paste. The reason being you want it to kind of caramelize and break down along with your spices to really add intensity to the flavor. All right, now this next step is extremely important. If you look at the bottom of the pan, you'll notice there's a lot of like leftover bits. You'll see it all kind of looks like it's sticking to the bottom of the pan, but it's not. What we do at this point, three cups of red wine, and actually we pour this in and it actually deglazes the pan. Once we put the wine in, you want to stir it around with just the wine only for a minute. The alcohol does cook out of the wine, but should you choose not to want to use wine, that's okay. You can just replace the wine with additional beef broth. Now we add our four cups of beef broth to the wine mixture in the bottom of the pan. Third of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. And then also got three tablespoons of brown sugar or since this is my husband's favorite dish, he prefers that I use the coconut cane sugar. Once we get everything in the pot, stir it around a little bit, and then you want to bring it up to a good, nice simmer. Okay, once it comes back, we want to add the short ribs back into the pan. Make sure you nestle them down really good, so you can try and get everything submerged and the good juices there cooking away. Once you get to this point, put the lid on it, throw it in the oven, and hit the trail. All right, once you get home from your beautiful ride, you get to take this out of the oven. Now make sure you set it and do not peek. Let it rest for 30 minutes. Sprinkle a little parsley on top for a beautiful presentation. And there you go. Fall off the bone braised short ribs. Mmm, delicious. Oh my gosh, you have got to try these. The very best way to end an exciting day out on the trail, out on the razor, after a round of golf. Yeah, these, this is the way to end it. At your leisure, we'll be right back. Springtime is the time to buy a new Polaris. Right now, the world's best-selling off-road lineup is priced to move. Get more done with a hardworking Ranger. Chase adventure on a legendary sportsman or live wide open in a high-performance razor. Rebates up to $1,500 are available now during the Polaris Spring Sales Event. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high. The stars come out at night Oh, there ain't nothing like Being raised in the basin with a youth reservation Skin starvation That Duchesne County life
you're on the track, at the dunes, or in the mountains, Paris RV and Stryker are number one. Chill out in the 2019 Stryker 2313, 35995 or 320 a month, zero down. Or kick it in the 2019 Stryker 2912, 39995 or 355 a month, zero down. Or the 2019 Stryker 2816, 49995 or 440 a month, zero down. It's time to get your toy hauler at Paris RV. All right, keep digging, Chad. You got us into this mess. Rhea says, <laughs> Rhea says, we don't need a four-inch lift. Rhea says, a three-inch lift is going to be just fine. Rhea says, three is more than enough. No, if I we had never four, said that. If we have a four-inch lift, we would be up there with Marlon and not here. So he's blaming the whole thing on me. <laughs> this welcome, is totally not true. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. Welcome we, to At Your Leisure, everybody. <laughs> we, uh, this obviously, is not leisure. Obviously, we have not made it to the globe mine, the copper globe mine yet, but we are creating some artifacts of our own because with uh, all these, with all these wranglers, our little Cherokee didn't have the ground clearance, and we are sledding on some really hard snow. But it's just a tiny little patch, so we gunned it and we didn't make it, as you can see. And the funny thing is, this is the only snow in the entire, look, just look around at this valley. Yeah. The only place the snow is, is right here on the road where we're trying to get through. Right. You, you know, what's happened is that the snow is coming in here and drifted in here and just filled it up. Right. And so that's why, why, why you have a bunch of snow in the middle of the road. Exactly. And Marlon, yeah. thank goodness you're here. And also Larry with your, both your Wranglers, because you guys are going to get us out of this mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I, we are. I, 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 <laughs> even if it takes till midnight. Right. It just might. So hush. <laughs> Chad, you're doing a fine job. You All get right, your exercise. Well, you know what? We're just uh, tell us a little bit about what we would have seen at the mine. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's so what yeah. people if they don't get stuff, what are they going to okay. see? Okay. Well, further on up, uh, just before we get to the globe mine, there's a there's a grave there, and it's a sheep herder that was shot, and the sheep herder uh, and the cattleman had a kind of a war thing going on. Well, the cattleman shot the sheep herder, and he crawled quite a ways, and and finally passed away, and. Uh, and so they just buried him up here. And so now there's a little monument that tells the story. And they have the actual place where he's buried. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, that, that, that's reality back then. Well, it's, you know, it was the wild, wild west. Yeah. And the law was way off there in the distance. Yeah. And, you know, it's the kind of way it worked out. Yeah. And it's the Swayze boys and, and, uh, and we also had uh, Butch Cassidy during that time, and they had to make friends with each other. Sure. Or else, uh, you know, one of them might be done in. You never know. Yeah, so. you want to keep your, your friends close, but your enemies closer. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, are you throwing that on top of me? <laughs> Jeez, it's just insult to injury. Okay. I've hit treasure. I've got the differential. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know that old poem, there's a hole in my bucket? I'm quite convinced there's one in the shovel because I'm not moving nearly enough. Oh, so honey, faster, we are, faster. We are, oh, hush you. We are three and a half inch lift. We're going to leave from here right now and take off to our along the way story. And you're going to want to stay tuned to see if we actually ever make it to the globe mine. We will. I guarantee it. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure at Cessus Castle in Latvia, a tiny country in Eastern Europe that in the last hundred years has survived the Kaiser, Hitler, and 50 years of communist domination and emerged out the other side as a surprisingly fun travel destination. Symbolically, the animals of Latvia emerge out of communism and into freedom in this iconic sculpture in Latvia's charming capital, Riga. Riga is just a fantastic city. We have a lot of interesting things to offer, starting from culture, from beautiful architecture, from really nice cakes, from superb <laughs> coffee shops, all for literally every interest. Margarita leads our group on a walk through Riga's rainy old town, a UNESCO World Heritage Site dating from the 13th century. The nearly 500-foot-high steeple of St. Peter's Lutheran Church is the centerpiece of Old Riga. 
This building is a post-war reconstruction. The original church was destroyed by artillery fire during World War II. Uh, St. Peter's was first reported in written sources in 1209. Not to be outdone, the Catholics built the Cathedral Basilica of St. James 20 years later. The green patina of its copper spire shines through Old Town. The ornate house of the Blackheads is a rebuild after the 14th century original was bombed by the Germans. And just for fun, a bronze armadillo climbs the nearby steps from a children's playground. Riga is most famous for its early 20th century Art Nouveau buildings, reportedly the largest collection in the world dating from the early 20th century. As many as 300 apartment buildings decorated in the Art Nouveau style were built just outside Old Town. We're headed out of town at dawn to the countryside village of Lagatna and the farm of Cynthia, Christoph, and their mother Elita, who is preparing a traditional Latvian breakfast buffet. We get an up-close personal look at how the Latvian family lives, what they eat, and how they make a living. After communism, they bought their once communal farm, and today Cynthia oversees a thriving winery, while Christoph has built a workshop and puts us to work creating handcrafted spoons and cutting boards. I think I'd better keep my day job. This 60s-era Soviet apartment house is the longtime home of Anna, Christoph's grandmother. Although tiny with ancient appliances, it serves her well. For lunch, we are hosted at the farm of Christina for a traditional feast of meatloaf, sausage, potatoes, salad, and red cabbage, all from their farm. Latvia's medieval times are reflected in the 800-year-old Cessus Castle, built along historic trade routes. It's open for a visit, but has no lights. We must carry candle lanterns to light the spiral staircase up the western tower. As a building contractor, fellow traveler John Cameron is impressed with the castle's construction. And I was thinking to myself, they really had to work hard to put a castle together, you know, 200 or 500 years ago. The luxurious Palace of Rundale, built in the 19th century by Latvian royalty as a summer getaway, is now a museum and popular tourist attraction, and today stands in as a period movie set. Cameras roll in the central courtyard while actors on two legs and four prepare for their next scene. Napoleon converted these opulent rooms into a hospital during his invasion of Russia. It later served as a school and veterans home. The Soviet regime established the museum and in 1972 began 50 years of restoration work. Today, the palace and its Versailles-like gardens house international dignitaries and rate among Latvia's most popular destinations. Latvia may not be high on most bucket lists, but this tiny country of two million, less than a third the size of Utah, is a fascinating treasure of history, architecture, great food, and friendly folk. Lots of historical things, lots of interesting events, so up to every taste. Restein at your leisure along the way in Latvia in Eastern Europe. It's time to get out and ride at the Yamaha Get Out and Ride sales event with as low as 2.99% interest for 36 months, plus up to $3,000 customer cash on the industry's hottest models. So see your local Yamaha dealer today for huge savings. Then, get out and ride. Get your new Yamaha at Stedman's Recreation. Ride hard, play hard. And we will see you next week on The County Seat.
My daughter and I had just finished a run at this place called Eagle Point. It's this really cool but kind of challenging ski resort that has a real family feel to it. She was so excited because she beat me down the run. Deja vu. I saw myself as a kid out skiing my mom. It was a big moment for me. And all of a sudden it hit me. I was making the same memories for her. Beaver County, Utah. Make it more than a vacation. Well, Rhea, I told you we wouldn't have been stranded up here. If we couldn't have got out of the snow, we'd have just lived here until the snow melted. <laughs> easily, actually. That's <laughs> yeah. a nice little cabin. Yeah, she always says she lives in places like that. Well, just for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to At Your Leisure. Well, as you can see, we got unstuck and we finally made it. We are here at the Copper Globe Mine. And there are a lot of artifacts up here. There's a whole bunch of uh, wood stockpiled yeah. over here for smelting. Ashley tried to do some of the initial smelting of the copper ore, but I think the really interesting thing is, is that everywhere you look around here, there's bright turquoise copper colored ore. Yeah, and I, this little piece is so cute. It's got like an azurite in it or something. That must, is that a byproduct of copper? I don't know, but, it, don't it's, know, it's, but... It's, got a, it's very, very bright blue. It's gorgeous. Okay, so lessons learned, okay? Always carry a strap with you, a turnbuckle. It's good to have a winch, and, and never forget a shovel. And friends, friends are good. Friends are, <laughs> friends, friends are good, as we learned today with our little Jeep that couldn't. <laughs> it is so difficult. Anyway, we have a lot of business to do. Let's start with this week's contest winner. This week's contest winner is Rob Banks, who submitted this picture to us on Facebook. Congrats, Rob. You are the winner of a Mountain Series Camp Chef stove. Nobody does it better than Camp Chef. And it looks like you're also going to win a $100 gas and gift card to Eagle's Landing. Be sure to call us at 801-947-8888 to claim your prizes. And you'll also want to be sure to gas up your rig with a 91-octane ethanol-free fuel. That real gasoline that you can only get at Eagle's Landing. Now, it's time to take a look at our calendar of events. Now, April 25th through the 28th is the Arch Canyon Jeep Jamboree down in beautiful San Juan County, and we will be there. And that same weekend, April 26th through the 28th, you'll have a chance to catch us again as we will be heading to the 27th Annual Moab Rotary Car Show. Finally, we will be attending the very first Canab Red Rock ATV Jamboree the first weekend of May. Now, let's take a look at next week's show. Next week, we'll be in Moab to enjoy some red rocks and trails at the Easter Jeep Safari. While we're there, we're going to meet the Hutchinsons, who take on a new trail with a group of brand new riders. After that, Reese takes us to an unusual park that isn't filled with trees and green grass, but instead, it's filled with red rocks. Next week's show looks great. If Rhea and I don't show up, you'll know it's because one of us went in here when we weren't supposed to. And our friends didn't bail us out this time, <laughs> like they usually do. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We do want to thank <laughs> we do want to thank you all for being our rescuers because we would still be stuck in the snow. We never would have made it. Yeah. Thanks to Larry Ellertson and to the Sharps and to Critter for bringing wood to get the tires unstuck. And to Al, thank you all for showing up. Great day. It, it really was. So as we end every show, we always say, remember, there is adventure around every bend. Just got to get out there and create your own adventure. At, At your, your leisure. leisure. Anybody got a flashlight? Yeah. Uh, I got a lighter. That's what I was digging for.